Hello class, this is Mr. Fordham and this is the review video that you should be doing over your break to help you get ready for your Unit 6 test. Uh, just to remind you what this test is over, it begins with imperialism and the scramble for Africa. It goes down through World War I, World War II, um, and there's the Russian Revolution in there, Red Scare, Great Depression, Fascism, Social Darwinism, and uh, it, we basically end with World War II. So the purpose of this particular video is to help you get ready for that test. Make sure after you watch this video that you go back into Google Classroom and that you take the accompanying quiz that goes with this thing. Uh, watching it is not enough. You have to go and take the quiz first so that I know that you watch the video and uh, then I'll give you credit for it and I'm going to take a quiz grade for that. This is due by Wednesday of your week off so make sure that you've done it by Wednesday and uh, I'll give you credit for that. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm not going in any particular order. I'm actually looking at the test right now as I'm sitting here making this video. So this should be pretty beneficial for you as I'm going through this. So a few of the words that you need to make sure that you're familiar with. Make sure you're familiar with the word militarism. If you remember the main, M-A-I-N, the things that led up to World War I, what were they? Militarism, entangled alliances. Uh, imperialism and then nationalism so make sure you know all of those words what they mean how that goes with that militarism uh, is the glorification of the military don't forget what that means uh, remember how um, the Germans were building up their military uh, the word mobilizing make sure you understand what the word mobilizing means it means getting your army ready for war uh, propaganda those are ideas that are spread in order to promote a cause or to damage a cause that is opposing to the one that you're promoting. Uh, reparations. Remember, Germany had to pay reparations uh, to the Allies following World War I. They weren't very happy about it. It was part of the Treaty of Versailles. Reparations are payment for war damage. Payment for war, war damage. An ultimatum. That might be one word that we haven't covered uh, very deeply yet, but an ultimatum um, is basically a final set of demands. If I set an ultimatum for you, I've set an, a final set of demands that you must meet. In other words, uh, for example, if you don't turn something in on time, I say, all right, I'm giving you an ultimatum. You get it turned in by this Friday or you get a zero. Uh, so that's a that's an ultimatum. Make sure you know those. Uh, we know what appeasement means. We talked about Neville Chamberlain and his appeasement um, of the, uh, the policies of the Germans and Hitler. Uh, his policy of appeasement, just basically letting the bully kind of win. You know, giving him what he wants. Remember what we said about the lunch money? Comes, give, takes your lunch money, and you're like, all right, well, I'll give it to you today, but don't leave me alone tomorrow. But what does he always do? He always comes back. That's not how you handle a bully, right? So that's what he was doing. He was appeasing the bully. A uh, German uh, blitzkrieg, B L I T Z K R I E G, blitzkrieg. That word means lightning war, and that's the kind of war that Hitler liked to fight. It was uh, just hit them hard over and over again. Don't stop just until they let up. Uh, German Blitzkrieg. It's a lightning war. Uh, kamikaze. Kamikaze. These are Japanese pilots uh, who undertook these suicide missions in order to attack these American warships. Um, that's what the kamikaze pilots were in uh, K-A-M-I-K-A-Z-E. That's what kamikaze means. Uh, genocide. Gen genocide is the deliberate destruction of a group of people, and that's exactly what the Nazis were doing to the Jews uh, through the Holocaust. That's what a genocide is. So you're trying to destroy an entire group of people. Uh, like I said, make sure you know the word nationalism nationalism and how it was a threat to the peace among those many nations. You need to make sure that you understand that. Uh, make sure you understand what the Russian or the Bolshevik revolution was in 1905. Make sure 
you understand, you know, they went from a czar to a dictator. So it led to some minor changes. Um, it changed the way they did everything and it got rid of the czar and it brought in this communist regime. Uh, but by and large, the people were still oppressed. So these are minor changes in Russia. Uh, make sure you understand how the Industrial Revolution encouraged imperialism. Remember, imperialism is where these countries want to go and they want to take over more land, get more territory for themselves. Um, and uh, how it created a need for more land. Uh, so they were, were trying to get that land so they can get the raw materials from those places. Uh, make sure you understand what the Sepoy Rebellion was. Remember the Sepoys, S-E-P-O-Y. Those are our Indian soldiers that are serving in the British Army when Britain was in control of India. And uh, remember that their rebellion was caused because they were mistreated. Remember, they weren't even given the proper equipment. They weren't given the proper um, cleaning equipment to clean their guns. They gave them... Uh, it was disgusting, but they gave them animal fat to do that. It was pretty gross, um, but that's what they did. Um, make sure you understand that Britain had control of Southern Africa after the scramble for Africa, and you know uh, that's easy to understand because in South Africa today, there's many, many people of European descent there. There's a lot of white people down there, uh, so make sure you understand that. Um, remember that the those imperialist nations were trying to modernize the lands that they took over. And um, they were imposing their culture on those people, uh, encouraging, in, encouraging those people to act like them, um, to assimilate to the way they, were, uh, they act. So they would be wearing their type of clothes and that sort of thing. And it was really sad because we lost a lot of African history and culture during that time. Also remember that Germany joined the Central Powers. This is World War I. They joined the Central Powers to protect themselves against Russia. Remember that the Russians had this bond with the Serbians. So after this thing happened and uh, with Archduke Franz Ferdinand, uh, Germany, uh, of course, had a uh, bone to pick and Russia had a bone to pick with, with Germany. So that was why Germany... One reason that they uh, created the Central Powers. Um, make sure you understand the significance of the automatic machine gun. It could just spray bullets and kill lots of different people, and it was it was one of the causes of the stalemate on the Western Front during World War One. If you remember, with the trench warfare, uh, if it hadn't been for the <clears throat> significance of the of the automatic machine gun. Uh, the trench warfare probably wouldn't have been quite as effective because they could have overrun each other and that sort of thing. But when you go up and over uh, and run into no man's land and they're shooting at you with these automatic machine guns, then you know there's nowhere to hide. They're just spraying you and mowing you down. And that was also one reason that World War I had been more destructive than a lot of the other wars for that very reason. Uh, what, uh, one of the reasons... Um, or one of the effects of militarism was um, was that these these nations had a lot of uh, political tension. So militarism, nationalism, all those things caused lots of tension. So that's what I'm getting at there. Uh, and it was often very very difficult for those two sides in World War One uh, to gain an advantage over each other because the, the machine gun made it nearly impossible for troops to advance uh, between the the machine gun and the trenches. Uh, it made it almost impossible and they would go on for days and weeks and months and without gaining an inch. Uh, so a whole lot of that people died at that time and for seemingly uh, not a whole lot of gain. Um, Another thing that helped turn World War I into a really global war, something that made it include all those different areas, was the submarine, the U-boat uh, that the Germans had, uh, the unrestricted submarine warfare that was causing a lot of issues. Um, 
And that is ultimately the thing that brought America into the war uh, between the sinking of the Lusitania, which had, which had some Americans on it that got killed, but then also the Zimmerman telegram where they were trying to convince Mexico to help them out, and they promised Mexico they'd give them back some of the southern, uh, southwestern states, such as Texas and, and New Mexico and that sort of thing. Uh, but uh, along with that, um, and, and of course, they used the submarine to sink the Lusitania, so that's that's a primary example of that, but that really turned it into a global war. No longer is that are they confined to land. They're fighting way out at sea and sinking each other and each other's ships and that sort of thing. Um, and um, women had a very big role to play in World War One. Don't forget about that. Um, we can't we can't understate that enough. Um, they kept their nation's industries going because they took. They took their husbands' jobs. I mean, not necessarily their husbands. They took the men's jobs, uh, and they kept everything running. They, yeah, the the men were off shooting the guns, but the women were making the bullets and making the guns. So they were very important to this. Um, if you remember, uh, by 1918, World War One was coming to a close. It come to a close, and uh, Europe was pretty much in ruins at that point. So you need to remember that. Uh, one of the results of the Bolshevik Revolution, I know I'm jumping around a lot, but these this is sort of as if, as if we were playing Jeopardy in class. I'm just kind of jumping around looking at what's on the test and just trying to remind you here, so I'm sorry about that. But um, one of the results of the Bolshevik or the Communist uh, or the Russian Revolution um, it was that communism came to be the rule of law in Russia. If you remember Vladimir Lenin and Trotsky and all that bunch, they were ahead of the Red Army, and it had been the Red Army versus the White Army, that is the communists versus the Tsarists, the people that supported Tsar Nicholas II, wanted him to stay in control, so they had their fight going on, and uh, ultimately the communists went out there. Uh, Lenin's new economic policy, don't forget about that as he was in there, and he actually didn't get to rule very long before he actually uh, died, if you remember, only a, a, you know, a short period of time. But in that time, he wanted to rebuild the Soviet economy. Um, so he was using his new economic policy, his NEP. Remember I told you that would be important? Uh, that thing was basically using a little bit of capitalism in their communist state in order to raise up uh, the economy. Uh, he didn't believe in full-out communism. Uh, he believed in a little bit of competition. He believed it was necessary. And that is something that Stalin just will never really understand. And he's trying to go full-blown communism. Uh, but, uh, but Lenin understood that pure communism doesn't work. Uh, Stalin's five-year plan was to do really the same thing. He wanted to turn the Soviet Union into this big modern industrial power, and uh, that's what he was attempting to do, uh, but albeit a different way from Lenin. Um, so uh, don't forget that uh, when we talk about the revolutions there in Russia, what are the three things they wanted? Peace, land, and bread. And uh, bread, we're just talking about food. So food shortages were a very big deal. People were starving. And I've told you this before. Any time you can find poverty, that creates a power vacuum, and the people will worship or, or, or whatever comes along. They'll give that person a uh, the power if they promise that, that they'll take care of them. And that's oftentimes when we get a dictator in history. Um, so don't forget that the Red Army fought against the White Army, like we said. Um, um, I'm just scanning here, seeing what's important. Um, during, during Stalin's reign, uh, he... Let's see. He would have, like we said, he was really big into the pure communism and that sort of thing. Um, 
Now, when we look at the Great Depression, that was another thing that we talked about. The Great Depression, remember the things that caused it, stock market crash, but also buying on credit and buying stocks on margin and that sort of thing. Using credit, uh, you're, you're borrowing money to go buy stocks. That's a very bad idea. Uh, those those all were the cause, the bubble that eventually burst in 1929 with our stock market crash. Um, so don't, don't forget about that. Um, and high that that leads to very high unemployment in the 30s uh, a lot of bank closures a lot of people don't trust the banks anymore um, the Nazis if you remember under Germany when we move forward we're talking about World War II life under the Nazis was not very pleasant uh, the Nazis pretty much controlled every part of your life don't forget about that uh, when we talk about D-Day, we talked about D-Day just the other day. Um, don't forget uh, that that is the Allied invasion of France. And you might say, well, I thought France was one of the Allies. They were. But France was under occupation by the Germans. So northern France, what we call Normandy, that's what happened at, uh, uh, on D-Day. is the, the Allies invaded and took France back finally and uh, pushed the Germans back into their own country. The Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor was the thing that brought us into World War II. Please don't forget the difference between the two uh, causes uh, of the major two wars. World War I, uh, what causes us to become involved. Okay, so America, I'm talking about America here. What causes us to become involved is the sinking of the Lusitania, the Zimmerman telegram. When we're talking about World War II, we're talking about... Uh, the bombing of Pearl Harbor by the Japanese. That's what ultimately brings that in. Uh, the target of the Nazi Blitz, the Blitzkrieg we talked about, was London. So don't forget about that, 1941. Um, now, Hitler wanted to persecute and eliminate the Jews. We know that from talking about the Holocaust. A very awful thing he did there. Um, uh, ultimately, the Great Depression doesn't just cause a lot of unemployment. It causes the government to feel that complete, um, complete unrestricted uh, economy is not good. They believe they didn't believe that complete laissez-faire economics or hands-off approach was a good thing. They believe the government does have a a place in creating that social safety net. Uh, so that people that don't have jobs can be taken care of. People uh, that are too old to work or that are un that are hurt or whatever, those things, uh, there needs to be an outlet for those people or people that have been laid off or whatever. We're talking about the welfare program. Uh, so what ultimately happens is it does lead to more, lead to more government in people's lives. Uh, so that is that is one effect of that. Don't forget about that. Uh, the, um, let's see, and I'm rounding out here at what I'm seeing, but, um, don't forget that, uh, the 1930s, of course, we had a lot going on with our Great Depression during that time, but ultimately, a policy of appeasement, and that's already been one thing about that I mentioned before, but there, there'll be plenty about appeasement on your test. Don't forget the Axis uh, aggression, the, the all the different violations of the Treaty of Versailles that Hitler kept doing. You know, he built up his army three times as big as he had permission to do. It went from 100,000 to 300,000. Also, he was going in and, and taking over areas, should, areas he, he shouldn't have done, the Sudetenland, and that caused the Czech crisis, uh, Poland, and he was um, the onslaught, the, the linking between Austria and Germany, all these different things he wasn't supposed to do. He just kept on doing them, and we, we just didn't do anything about it. He quit paying his war reparations, all of those different things and all of the aggressive things he did was met basically with silence 
Um, and um, Neville Chamberlain kept getting these agreements signed with Hitler, and then Hitler would violate it, and we'd do nothing about it. And of course, America during that time, World War One, um, from well before World War One and World War Two, we were trying to follow this isolationist policy, trying to stay out of these wars. And then we come sweeping in at the end of both wars, and and we come out smelling like roses compared to the other other. Um, other people and that's one reason we're a superpower today but don't forget the term holocaust refers to the massacre of more than six thousand sorry six million jews that the uh the, at the hands of the nazis uh ve day don't forget what that means victory in europe victory in europe and that is after Ger germany surrenders that is the thing that brings us that um and uh of course the Let's see. I'm going to make sure I get the uh, this on here. Uh, we want to make sure that we understand World War I was followed with the Treaty of Versailles. The Treaty of Versailles was very harsh on the German people. It made Germany completely take the blame and so forth. Uh, and then uh, the cause, what, well, know the four main causes of of World War One, M A I N. Make sure that you know those. And uh, let's see. And that's pretty. That's pretty much it. There'll be some. There'll be some other stimulus-based things for you to look at. So make sure, guys. Make sure that you have listened to this. And of course, if you're at this point, you've listened to it. If there's anything you didn't get, rewind it. Watch it again. Make sure that you have that. If you have any questions, go ahead and email me. It's vfordham at meta.org. Uh, and then make sure that you take the quiz. Don't forget to take the quiz. And I've also included your study guide. So if you want to go ahead and get busy on that, that's, that should help you. This video should actually help you with your study guide. So when you get back, you won't have a whole lot to do. Okay.